Hello, hello, hello. Wow, it has become a windy day today. Kind of insane. How is everyone doing? What is going on today? Well, let's give you the rundown. I got the kilowatt in. I'll show you a little bit more information about that. We've got to do a little bit more of actual build budget. We did mostly power yesterday. A little bit of water, a little bit of tent. Got to look into the maintenance, right? Maybe clean up this spreadsheet a little bit so it's a little more readable. Maybe I share this spreadsheet out for people, other people who might be interested in, you know, just having a template of, hey, here's a checklist. <laughs> Did you remember to think about this stuff? Because if you didn't, there could be a problem. We'll see. I don't know if I want to put that much work into cleaning it up and making it easier and, and all that sort of stuff. Realized I haven't included the tire stuff that I was looking into in the costing yet. That's all right. My loyalty, my poke loyalty is 61. Ooh. Out of a hundred. Getting closer. One of these days I will be twice as loyal to myself. So I guess there's nothing to it but to do it. If you're uh, lurking and watching on Twitch. Hi. I'm David. This is my stream. Normally I talk about tech stuff, but today and all of this week and maybe even going forward, we'll see, I'm going to be talking about building out a camping trailer from a tech perspective. It's going to include internet, it's going to include a network, it's going to include all the things that uh, I might need if I wanted to stream or YouTube or whatever, uh, camping adventures. So if that's something that interests you, hang out. If it, if you want to know more about a particular subject, remember to talk down below. If you're, uh, if you're lurking, maybe give a little shout out on Twitch, or if you're watching on YouTube, just throw a comment down there and say, Hey, this is interesting, or hey, this sucks. Because, uh, you know, I'd like to know. Right now, it is definitely the boring part, and, you know, I'm streaming it. It's I'm not putting anything together for YouTube. I'm not editing. I'm not doing any of that just yet. The plan is at some point that, of course, I'll be doing that. But for now, this is stream of thought. This is... This is sitting at a desk, um, putting numbers on paper and trying to make this make sense. There's a bonus that the more I talk about it, the more I go over it, the more I put actual numbers down, um, the more I'm getting the conversation with uh, my girlfriend going about what this really is going to look like, because we've been talking about it back and forth. We've been having this conversation, honestly, for the last couple of months. I think it started three or four months ago, where it's just, we both got laid off, and, you know, if we end up having to cut down 
on our expenses and and pull things back a little bit. What does that mean? How do we do that? And how do we still get something enjoyable out of life? And you know, her first her first reaction. Let's do a road trip. I uh, you know, I jokingly. Yeah, yeah, let's do a road trip. But, you know, it's seeming more and more like a real possibility. Like it's something that we could do and and you know, spend some time figuring out what do you want in the place that you live? Because that's another part of the conversation. You know, you apply for jobs in different places and you think, what would it be like to live there? Well, what would be an acceptable place to live? I don't know. I know that there's places I don't want to live, but I can't think of any place that I'm like, I would love to live there. Um, so that's kind of what this is about, you know, just go and see it, do it and hopefully share it. Right. So with that being said, intro out of the way, I think I need an intro screen instead of saying the stream starts soon. I need to say like intro, maybe superimpose myself over my logo. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, we're here. I really need to clean up this window. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm reminded that I forgot to clean it up. Uh, I mean, over there, down below, that is supposed to be the chat window. But there's no borders. I haven't done anything interesting with that. The follower goal is cut off by my window, which... I wanted to make my window smaller so that if I wanted to just take a clip of this and put it on YouTube, I'm not taking up the entire thing. I can just, I can do the editing and, and make it YouTube, change the voiceover, you know, stuff like that. But right now I've kind of got the worst of all worlds. Anyway, so uh, first things first, let's talk about... Hour again, this will be short. Uh, like I said, I picked up a kilowatt. Is that going to show up? Yeah, I picked up the one that has like a remote sensor, which is nice because I don't want to be climbing under my desk to see how much stuff is taking. And I realized that my laptop on idle, just you know, sleep mode as it were, takes 18 watts. It's kind of a lot. I, I need to start shutting my laptop down, but. Uh, start it up. It takes about 35 watts and currently streaming. It's sitting between 76 and 80. Um, in this situation, it's, it is powering the keyboard, powering the mouse, but that's kind of it. Uh, it is, it is doing dual displays. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. That'll be interesting to check. Um, but yeah, it's good information to have. Um, I can go into power and here I can say like, it's not 20 Watts. This is, we're going to say 80 and that's, that's not going to be including, uh, the hard part is that's that's even going to go higher because it, if I'm editing video, that's that's going to get... It probably will end up being the 200 that I initially said. Um, but like the, the Pixel 6 here. Actually, let's, let's do that. Let's plug my phone in to the kilowatt and see what we get. Grab my charger, which is where I got my initial 27 watts from. And this isn't going to be 100% accurate because my phone is mostly charged at the moment. So I am so glad that I have my outlet, some of my outlets on top of my desk. Super useful. All right. So right now the kilowatt is reading zero. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there's a little glare. Yeah. 
So now we plug in. This is no phone. So that's not bad, actually. It's, it's not pulling anything with no phone. So my phone right now is at 84%. So it's not going to go into fast charging mode. It's just going to... It's going to do slow charging. And I realized boom, I'm not watching my stream. So slow charging, it's pulling between 10 and 7. Oh, wait, no, it says it's charging rapidly. So it's charging rapidly right about 10. So we can say, boom, 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 you are 10. I'm not going to unplug my camera because I don't want to deal with that crap. Um, let's see what the Pixel Buds take when they're charging. This is kind of a... Do I definitely need it? Well, now we can put an X on that, though. Pixel Buds, although I think they're already completely charged. Yeah, they're taking zero because they're still fully charged. So that doesn't help me at all. I have a Pixel XL here that I'm planning on giving to someone soon. What's it take? It's sitting right around five to charge. Um, I'm not going to go digging out the GoPro, but at least I've got decent numbers on that. Oh, I don't have... This is only summing if. Okay, or it's not summing if. All right, well, that's fine. So this this includes it no matter what. Cool. It is interesting that my laptop is, at least from when I'm using it, it's taking as much, basically, as a Starlink would. Probably more. It'll probably end up taking more, quite honestly. But good to know. Oh, I should put these are all zero, 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 just to make sure they don't accidentally get included. Oh, I'm like, why, is, why are those zero? Because I don't have them as selected. Um, talking to, I keep saying, I need to stop saying my girlfriend, but I haven't asked, I just realized I haven't asked her yet, like, does she mind if I say her name on camera? Like, I don't know. We've had a little bit of a conversation about it, and she's not sure she wants to be on camera. I keep telling her that, you know, an audience wants to see a couple, but... If she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be. It's, it's that, is, that is what it is, right? Um, it feels weird even saying that. Like, she, you've got to play the character. No, I don't I don't want that. I want her to, to want to be a part of it if she wants to be. <laughs> Not because uh, she's been asked. Uh, conversations. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. And that is... That's still in the firmly in the realm of we will see. We were looking at tent now. There is something I've been looking at, and that is um, the height. Like I need to be able to adjust the height of the tent, I think, because I don't want the tent to be sitting above the wind line of the car while I'm driving. I don't think, I think that's bad. Uh, from just from a gas perspective, but I want it that high later when I'm actually camping, because I want that vestibule to be able to go all the way down and not be, you know, spread out like a, like a too long dress or something. Um, so what I'm thinking about is the support posts being adjustable. Adjustable. Oh yeah, I have an aquarium. That's going to be interesting for this whole thing. 
and my hat sideways. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Luckily, I have Combi. Luckily, I have an automatic feeder already. So that's not going to be an issue. But cleaning, if I'm gone for a month, uh, I'm not going to ask someone else to do that, I don't think. But we'll see. We'll figure that out. Um, oh, one second. I got to. I gotta check this. Something about my house. Or, I guess, the house. It's weird to say that. And we're back. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, that house is more popular than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, adjustable uh, rooftop. Crossbars? I don't care about the crossbar. I want rooftop rack. Do I want adjustable height? Oh, what's this? Oh, these are only adjustable length. I do, I do like that though. The, the ability to stick more crap on it. <laughs> and I, actually, you know what? That's not... I may not need it to be adjustable if it's that high. And that allows me to get in the back of it. That's an expensive rack, though. And is there really any reason I can't do that myself? Well, I'm going to grab it as a, as a maybe. Oh, um, this is an overland truck bed rack. I 
don't have... Oh, yeah, I do. I have weight. Okay. What is the weight on this guy? Bearing capacity is fine. It doesn't have the actual weight. <laughs> uh, are, are we going to do more just capping on companies' websites? Hey, I got the, the combi. Um, I understand simply into the skew, but like, why, why don't you have, why doesn't this just connect to the installation guide? Like that should be automagic. This bedrack is equipped with numerous preset. It's got a high lift, spare tire. Yeah. Is it in here, maybe? Multi-purpose. I'm guessing that it's probably a knockoff of something else. Free shipping. I don't like that it doesn't give me a weight. Maybe it's in here somewhere. Or maybe they're not giving a weight because it is adjustable. All right, let's see. This is the adjustable overland truck bed. Oh. C1567. Let's see if it's in here. C15. Okay, so you don't enter. You just have to... You have to do it yourself. Control F. C1567 button again why let's see how's how's our pokemon looking is any good horrible horrible it's bad Maybe i got a trade didn't i get another steel guy i thought i got a steel when i traded a steel because I'm supposed to trade steely guys. Steely odds, steely guys. I know. <laughs> we were talking about truck bets, Pokemon. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. I'm really not. Eh, maybe a little bit. But it is a thing that I just. I want to get taken care of. Heracross, you know, you're just bugging, fighting. You're not steel, right? It used to be so much easier. Like, you could just look at him and go, oh, yeah, that's that's a steel type. Now it's like, oh, there we go. Yeah. But he's fantastic. Well, we'll look to see if there's something else first. There we go. Ooh, he's even more fantastic. Such is my life. Octavish. Yeah, 
these guys are, yeah, these are ground. Wait, this guy's steel, right? Yeah. And he's got only one fantastic. Goodbye. Wow, he's terrible. I definitely need to change that one. You know, I just keep saying he. I don't know. Where does it show? I guess it probably doesn't matter. There's probably no, because there's no breeding, they don't care if it's male or female. Uh, you know. All right, so we got our trade. All good. Um, easy, 35, 40 minutes. Ba, 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 ba. Multifunction, premium material. Why are you still advertising it? Like, this is the installation instructions. If... This is the installation instructions. <laughs> so it's, no. I'm not annoyed. You're annoyed. <laughs> There's nothing in here about weight. Well, I guess this will let me know if it is a uh, a real or knockoff version. Melon, melon, melon prawn, melaprawn. It's an Amazon brand. Maybe Amazon. 33 kilograms. That's not the one I was looking at, though. But okay, that lets me know that it's uh, an Amazon brand. Or they sell on Amazon. Van Bulkhead, Van... I mean... Now I have to look harder just because they're using a Bronco. It's a curse, I'm telling you. <laughs> this one. This is the one I was looking at. Currently unavailable. Oh no, this is not, this is a smaller version. Weight limit. 7.2 E plus 2. Okay, this is the second time I've seen that. Is is this something I should I'm missing? I should be like looking at that and going, oh yeah, seven point two E's. Or is that just the the bot that posts all this crap screwing that portion up? Item weight, 83 pounds. Okay, so we can assume that it's 80 to 90 pounds, I think, between... Uh, it's no long sun, but... Or tiger, with a Y. <laughs> okay, let's see, what if... Can I just do... Can I do a search for Melopron... It is interesting that you can just search and figure out, like, okay, who makes this? And 90% of the Made in the USA ones are basically the same thing, and these guys are just copying it. And they're from some boutique place, so you don't know if they're they're charging you an arm and a leg because they're, they want to pay their welder or times market rate to keep them off of the pipelines or something, right? Like, I, I don't begrudge anybody doing that, but 
Go out, get that bag, you know. <laughs> yep, I didn't catch the dotler. Okay, so they don't list theirs like that on here. Good to know. Oh, but... Yeah, it should just be Overlander Act, right? I said cargo corner bracket, but... Yeah, it's just their overland rack, which apparently isn't available, but that's all right. That is kind of neat, though. Depending on the dimensions of the trailer, like two of those with the, the wheels on them, or four of those. That looks uncomfortable as shit. I think that's my one. Uh... Other than that, that could be kind of cool. But, like, these are all links. Where's the link to their cargo case? See, and that's, that's why I start leaning towards this being automatically generated. Because the things that should be a link... Like this is, this is a description of a product, All right? Like this right here is a description of a product. Why, why is there no link to this product? What is, this is something I'm genuinely interested in, but I've got a, what, just go back up here and search for MGS cargo case and nothing comes <laughs> retailers what are you doing like I I get it you're a bot some some company that has this stuff mass produced out of the same factory that the the real company has them mass produced out of but like do better just do better that's that's all i ask all right let's let's look for something else oh a, a cybertruck panel is that no that's cybertruck company I'm sure that's legit. <laughs> See, like Yakima, okay. Uh, Yakima, everyone knows about Yakima. They were probably, they started at some tiny company paying their welder too much. Cool. Tough stuff overland. Let's see. Yeah, that one's six hundred dollars and has fewer features. See, this says to me, <laughs> "Made in America." <laughs> uh, probably wasn't. Tough stuff. They're in Ontario, California. Oh, so it could just be more expensive because it's in California. Let's go with this. What advantages will a tough... No, this is specifically for their tent, so... Nope. Not it. Oh, here we go. This is... Oh, two years old. That are height adjustable when unloaded.
I mean, this is two years old, so their roof rack raises and lowers, and the awning moves in and out for travel. Gas strut lift kit. Yeah. Sold out. Holy cow, though. That's, that's kind of a lot. Like, what do they have set up here? I mean, I guess I could just do square tube, square tube, weld a pulley onto it, and then a crank winch, winch down below, right? But at that point, I mean, then I'm, I'm back to looking at these guys. Because I'm just getting... I, that is basically my trailer. Um, but then I'm just getting them... Where'd they go? They had pictures of them, I swear. Are they in here? Retailers, we want to buy your stuff. We really do. But it's just a little bit of care. like. But they're basically that. And I think the idea is that you can push these, you can put these crossbars in and just you bolt whatever you want sort of crossbar to it. But if I'm making it adjustable, I'm hammering these things straight. And then I'm using these circles to weld square tubing to it. But I need a I need space for that square tubing. So maybe if I the square tubing would probably be hanging down about here on mine. Mine does not have these nice squared out. They're the standard. Well, let's bring it up. Dum, 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 dum. Let's get the Yeah, so this is what we're working with here. We get these nice rounded ones. Man, every time I look at this it looks just a little bit more beat up than I remember. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot a lot of of rust cleanup and holes to patch. But like, basically I would be putting them on both sides of the tire probably. It's hard to tell because of this tarp. I had to put a tarp over it because what you can't see is there is a four wheeler in here. Um, my sister was like, oh, you're you're taking that trailer? Well, I don't want to take the four-wheeler out of it. <laughs> so it's yours now. Uh, never mind, it doesn't run, hasn't been registered in 10 years. <laughs> uh, and, you know, me being plucky and younger by two years was like, yeah, I got to figure out how to get that thing out of there. <laughs> That's going to be, uh, I'm going to make sure you guys share that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had it covered just to make sure that it, you know, I didn't want it to get rained on or fogged on or what have you. This whole thing has been moved indoors. It's no longer in this location, but, uh, so yeah, we've got this. I wonder if I could just have like a square... I could probably put one of those prongs, right? And just put some square tubing of the same size that's going to go over here. And then maybe make it so that it rotates or something. So that when it goes down, the whole thing is only supported by two bars. But when it goes up, I can put a pin through and it'll lock a third strut in place. That seems like the right way to do it to me. 
But now I'm looking at things like square tubing. Ooh. Are we ready for square tubing, guys? And I have to really trust my welds. Do I trust my welds? I mean, I've now welded four times. Yeah, four times. <laughs> All right. So we're going to leave this firmly in the maybe. Um... What was this other one? Oh, this is pre-made trailers, and this is their... It's These are neat, but I don't like that they're... Well, I shouldn't say I don't like. like they built this tub, and it's probably got all these cool drawers back here. Uh, I got to figure out, like, okay, am I going to put... I think I'm going to have, like, a folding fork thing here. Uh, this will probably look way better if I were to be drawing it out, but I'm not gonna. So, meh, you know, no, that's not true. I am absolutely going to draft this out. Come on. Have you not been paying attention? I'm trying to plan everything. I don't want to be ordering a whole bunch of crap and then going, well, I don't need this. Well, this is trash. Oh, that's not going to work. I want to figure this out before I start buying crap. in a solid square shape. Yeah, I can't imagine, like, what's this guy talking about? How did you keep it from falling over? Like, if it's square and square... Built square tubing and four linear actuators to lift. It lowers below my truck and raises to open the trailer lid all the way and you use the tent vestibule. At a pro that's that's my right there. That's my concern. And then safety pins, yeah, to lock it off. Oh, actually that that does bring into I want an awning. Um and right now this seems to be the one. Um, the question is, where do I want the awning to take place, right? Because, like, not in the vestibule, obviously. I'm not going to have it hanging off of this thing. I could plan on having it this way, so it's like you walk around to get in and then walk back around. Like what do their their pictures show? Basically, no no awning. Although, actually, that's that's not a bad idea. If I have it underneath and I can rotate it out, so like I can leave the tent closed and pull the awning out, or I can unlock it, swing it out, and maybe it has a drop down stake, and I can pull it this way. It's getting more complex, isn't it? Because basically, if I'm going to have it rotate out, it needs another leg. Unless it fans out. That seems more complex than I want. Maybe if I do an awning, it's off of a car. So that this stays on the trailer. That's probably going to be the reality. Pokey catch. I almost missed one. That's on you. So yeah, maybe if I do an awning, it's going to be off the car. So I could drop the the trailer. And then pull the car around, be this way, and awning thusly. 
So then it just kind of extends this, so you step down and then awning. Because right now the top of my car is above my head when I'm standing, which is really weird, I have to admit. It's nice, but it is weird. So I think, well, I still want to do a little bit of research into awnings, but I think it's, it's less important. Um, cargo carriers, roof baskets, cargo carrier rack, rack accessories. Let's see. Did, yeah, just that. So that's basically another 500 bucks, which isn't terrible, but we can add it to the list, make sure we have the weight. Like maybe it's not what I'm going to be, maybe I'm not going to be using it, right? Maybe it's not something I'm going to add. Oh, whoops. I forgot to put the price for that silly thing. Melon Prawn, 509. And I forgot to put that it is 90 pounds. Now this probably isn't going on the trailer. It's probably going on the, the rig itself, but We'll still grab the weight, 28 pounds. And this thing costs the same as the rack. <laughs> that is one, like when you think about things like that, you buy a rack and then you put things on it that cost the same amount as the rack, like Crazy, crazy. Actually, that, that does, that brings up one other thing. Um, I want some sort of secure storage. Basically a little safe, something I can... I want to be able to leave stuff behind if I have to. Um, like I've already, there's already things I can do to make the trailer immobile. I mean, if you're going to show up with a, a tow truck and throw it on a flatbed, you know, there's not much I'm going to be able to do about that. But um, yeah, there's, there's other security things in place. But a I mean actually I think Hornady makes one that's like meant to be under bed it slides yes I am it's not that one Uh, rapid modular no keypad I swear they had one that was like an under bed setup is 
Is it considered a cabinet? Oh, well, it's only giving me the information about them. So it actually could have been one of these other ones. I mean, it's silly looking for gun safes for this, but the things that need to be secured, right? Yeah. It's like an underbed setup, I think. And it pops open from the top. Oh, no, it slides open. Mm, I don't like that it opens from the side. I guess that's not a problem if I just bolt it. What are the mounting patterns? Show me how it's mounted. Vertical or horizontal? Instructions? Yeah, probably instructions. I mean, it has a cable lock, right? That's, that's enough. You could just cable lock it. It takes power. How much power does it take? I should have realized that. Four AA batteries. Okay, but where's the actual mounting? Oh, well, I could use batteries for 12 months. That, that should be fine. I've lost my keys. But it doesn't show the mounting pattern. Again, retailers. I mean, I generally have a lot of respect for the things that Hornady makes, but... Like, how hard is it to to just... I understand that there's a lot to it. There's a lot of things that they need to show. But based on what I'm seeing, it's looking like... I mean, unless there's mounting places underneath that... I'm going to have to drill through this thing to mount it. Or maybe the infographic. Maybe one of these other things has something. Wait, isn't this what I was just looking at? What's the difference? So that's an ad, that's an ad. These are instructions. Are these just different instructions. These are just, okay. Again, retailers, what are you doing? Um, all right, but it's got, it's, it says it is a vertical or horizontal mount. <laughs> you didn't see that. That is interesting that it immediately goes to vertical gun safe. Um, well, well, let's see. Google says that's what I need, right? Like, that's way too much. That's way, way too much. What's this? Barska? That's... Probably a bit big. If I remember, those handles are like this wide, so that makes that thing this wide. I suppose I could just look at the uh, the specs, huh? I don't know who wants to do that, though. A 
uh, while you know. Okay, so why would clicking the link not open the link? Open the link. I mean, maybe that guy has small hands. Because that's... Yeah. Although the Hornady one was like this. Let's see. What's the... Ooh, what's that one? Well, let's let's figure out what the dimensions are on this one. Depth, exterior, width. Eight point six inches. All right. Nope. What are you? And. Why does it look like you're just a... What kind of key is that? That's kooky. I like kooky. Um, where's the... Di Did I miss the dimensions? Ah, there we go. Specification dimensions. Zero with 10. Okay, so that's bigger. We don't want that. Uh, what was this guy? Exterior 42 by 15 by 6. So 42, 15, 6. That's definitely the smallest so far. But not cheap either. Let's try getting rid of the word gun. Fast box model 47. Cheaper. It's still a gun safe. It looks like it's two. Uh, it looks like it might be like the cheapest of cheap though. I mean, right? At some point. No, 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 but it says it's heavy duty. And it says it's an RV. Height width 6.75 versus. And it's probably the same, probably roughly the same box. This one just had. More, you know, I bet it has in it drywall. Little known fact about safes 90% of the time it's thin sheet metal, drywall, thin sheet metal, except for the door. The door generally has thick sheet metal, drywall, the mechanism, and then thin sheet metal. The drywall is how it gets its fire safety or fire rating. And the thin sheet metal is what has to get punched through. I was actually, I was talking to a friend about that because the majority of safes, like this, this front door is the hardest part to get through. Just start cutting through the side because that is just thin sheet metal. Nothing is, nothing is there at all. Just thin sheet metal and some drywall. I was thinking about making a a metal shell like this just drill a couple holes right and then fill that thing with uh chunks of uh low melting point uh plastic mixed in with uh some sort of ceramic Because the, the low melting point plastic plus the ceramic should gum up cutting discs, saws, things like that. 
and just make getting into that thing miserable. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna add a whole lot of time. Maybe another you know twenty minutes or so to to cut through it all. But you're gonna be changing blades. You're you're gonna have to have brought a lot more crap than you thought you needed. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a thing where it's, it, if you're, when you realize that security is not about prevention, it's about uh, dissuasion. It, basically, it's it's not about stopping somebody from doing something. It's about making it take way longer and be way harder than they want it to be. You don't have to be 100% secure. You just have to be more expensive to attack or risky to attack than the guy standing next to you. That's it. <laughs> that That is security in a nutshell. You're never going to be 100% safe, but you can make sure that the, the cost-benefit analysis weighs against you or against them. At, you know what I mean. So doing stupid things like that, that make it just so that the things that they thought that someone thought were going to be easy begins being difficult and begins taking longer means they're more likely to abandon it. Yet yeah, your safe is still going to be destroyed. So, so what? Hopefully the stuff's still in it and the, the ceramic, uh, depending on what kind you use, but you should be able to, you should use some sort of ceramic that does roughly the same thing as the, as the gypsum in drywall to help prevent fires or help prevent fire damage. So you end up with, you know, double trouble. I don't know how, how much the plastic is low melting point or even just, you know, plastic in general, the plastic is going to begin venting and turning into some nasty stuff and it could be a problem in a fire so i haven't thought this through it was huh wouldn't that be funny that's it <laughs> hey i caught a neaterino any good fantastic fantastical all right Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm still leaning towards this, but this is basically the same thing, but thinner metal. All right, I'm going to put both of these in just as maybes. They might be a little bit larger than I need, but it's still... When it comes to secure storage, a little bit more is probably better than not enough. That one's on the no. We can get rid of the source. Uh, Hornady safe. This is fast box. Whatever that is. And the Hornady was five something, five twenty six and three seventy nine. Oh, I bet it doesn't list a weight. No, oh, it does. Fifty pounds. Fifty pounds. I mean, heavy is good. Heavy is reliable. You run out of bullets, you can hit them with it. <laughs> Name that movie. 45 pounds. So, okay, well, this says it's 45 pounds, so it just has a crappy door, but the rest is gooder? Or is it the other way around? This has a decent door, and the rest is crappy. <laughs> You decide. Forty-five 
best box uh, uh, 45 I think I said sorry sidetracked Forty-five. Yeah, so what do they add that's five pounds? Because they're... This one is... 47 by 6.75 by 13. And this is... 42 by 15 by 6. So this one's a little bit deeper. And it looks like it's got about an inch on each side. So there's there's definitely more in this one. Yeah. All right. Doesn't matter. It's uh That's that's as far as that's going to go for the moment. It may get revisited. We'll see. But we're still looking at racks. Now, let's insert below. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want insert above. Let's just call this DIY. Uh, DIY rack. And this is where would I get uh, two inch square post? I mean, this already has the holes drilled in it, which on one hand, nice. On the other hand, everything's getting in there. That is going to be full of spiders. <laughs> but speed holes. Maybe they'll whistle, though. Well, let's look. I bet you learn online metals. This is the Amazon. Oh, that's galvanized. Nope, that's that's a hard no. I am not dealing with galvanized. I know. You can just scrape the galvanizing off and weld around it. No. <laughs> two inch by two inch. So I'm guessing that means two inch, two inch, right? Heavy duty construction. So, what is the. This is 16 gauge, 2 by 2 by. What, do I, what am I getting for. This tube is 20 feet. 20 feet! Okay. Pickups available. I've never heard of Steel Dash. I would go to um, I would that's something I would do local. And I know that they're I think it's like new core. Maybe not metal, metal supply. Because metals apparently implies San Jose. I, I don't know if Oakland would be closer. I oh, have yeah, bay metals. Let's see what they got. Steel. I 
I mean, I probably want tubes and then sheet metal. Because I'm definitely putting, I'm, I'm hanging some of that stuff on the side. Deal with it. So, yeah, if I do like... How do I calculate the weight? Because there, there's two parts to this. There's, if I put a pin in to hold it, I need to know the weight of the pin. Or I just make that pin so ridiculously large that there's no way it matters. <laughs> that, that's probably what's going to happen. But then there's the other side of it of... Um, For steel tubing, tubing, yeah, tube calculator, yeah, this is what I'm looking for right here, not round tube, is there a square tube? With the material, height of material, let's do another, we'll just do two inch. That's funny. It says rectangular tube, but this says square tube. I think they know. Um, weight per 20 feet. So like if I start here at two inch and then oh okay so I could probably do one and a half and one and a quarter because I can't get one and three quarters. Like here is where it goes into halves, right? Like is a quarter inch too much rattly? Hmm. I used to have a ruler. Just so I could estimate one and a half, because, like, that seems too small. Let's look at this Reddit post, because they said that they did it, right? I built square tubing, blah, blah, blah. I guess I could just show up and figure it out, but we'll start at at two wall thickness in inches. So if I'm looking at, let's try 16 gauge first. I think that's gonna be too thin. Sixteen gauge is point oh five one inches <laughs> length of tube so this is where I kind of have to do a little bit of measuring but we'll just say in inches this is going to be it's going to go up Two feet, so 24. Oh, set to 12 if you're just comparing materials. And I don't think this, this is, oh, structural. Structural, oh, structurals, that's a whole different ballgame. Four by four, yeah, 
I mean, I'm not going to have an inch of wiggle room in there, right? Didn't catch a tail, though. Like, I'm even worried about a half inch of wiggle room. Although it becomes a quarter inch all the way around. I don't know. Uh, this is just guesstimating, realistically. Uh, it's going to come down to the the gauge, I think. So the maximum load for that tent was, I think, like 700. Static, 600. Okay, so 600. I feel like this is talking about this load, though, and it's not a... Oh, loaded over center. Point load in center. I had a hope. I really did have a hope. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is useful. I tried the online calculators and it's all Greek. Strength of structures and materials is something I'm good at. I don't know how strong your tank is. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> is this guy building a tank? <laughs> stand will be able to support a tank okay <laughs> uh, sometimes the four legs carry column load whereas the middle beams carry cantilever load which is much weaker how strong is your tank if your tank is very rigid when fold and the four columns will take the load if your tank bends and sags in the middle then the horizontal beams will also take the load you need to uh, the the radius of gyration. In short column and mild steel about sixty thousand. So I don't think two millimeter is one twelfth of an inch times four sides, four legs. Yeah, so like the column isn't a problem. Divided by 25, blah, blah, blah. The legs will not fail from standard compression. Or if the stand tips to the side or bends in the middle. In cantilever modulus, elasticity may come into play. Yeah, here we go. And that is... Sixty inches. The central edge is. It is a little bit more than five feet. But none of this is talking about what size of square tubing. Yeah, it'll be the joints. Ten millimeter thick class. 
10 millimeter thick glass. Holy cow. What is the formula for calculating the weight that steel tubing can handle? Times. W is the weight. D is the outside diameter in inches. Is it the inside diameter? L is the feet. Yeah, easy. No problem. The most commonly used density for steel is 0.2836 pounds per cubic inch. A different formula may be needed to account for the bearing weight distribution. You know what? Maybe I should have just signed in. <laughs> uh, steel to weight calculator. Uh, no. Uh, let's see if there's another one. Round can withstand higher than square. That's what I need. I need the allowable load per foot. That's what I'm looking for. Because it, it, it feels like someone had to have already calculated this. Oh, several, several hundred. Okay. Consult engineering tables. All right, give me, that's what I'm looking for is those engineering tables column load tables okay I do one I bet a lot of this stuff people don't want to put online because some moron like me is gonna say you said I mean I'm not that kind of person but Allowable concentric loads. So 16 gauge is 0 0.051. That's one six. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, That can't be right. One sixteenth of an inch. Oh, is it really? I'd, all this time, I did not know that. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> I should know that. Uh, that's, okay, see, then why does this say that? Only 16 gauge works that way.
All right, so let's look back at this. Everything in here is gauge. Goes 11 and 7, which aren't even on here, but they're less than that. Effective weight in feet. But this is 16 by 6. These are like... Oh, okay. Here we go. We need to go down. I'm looking at... Like, okay, 2 by 2. So this is twice the thickness. Effective... This would be twice the thickness of 16 gauge. So is that saying three pounds per foot? See, this is this is why they don't allow people like me to do these things. This is all square tubing. And then it goes to rectangular. Oh, I didn't even see, like, what, what material was that? HSS, square structural steel tubing. Okay. So two by two may not even be large enough. I might need to be looking at like four inches. Well, let's look at this silliness. Like that's just bent sheet metal. Does it say what gauge sheet metal it is? Because that might be nice. Oh yeah, no, I had to look on Amazon to find actual information for some reason. Okay, so this is the, the universal. That takes up to 800 pounds. Which actually is not enough. Because the maximum weight is 6. Oh no, it's just right. Maximum load is 6. And it weighs almost 2. So yeah, that but that doesn't give me 10%. That gives me less than 10%. So that's that's not what I'm looking at. This set its maximum weight, right? Is less. Probably because, as they pointed out, these are tubes. I mean, this one is at least adjustable. But their max load rating is 800 pounds. And based on what I'm reading, that's from the bar that goes across Joltik. Didn't catch the Joltik. Do they have TIG welding as a unique welding design?
I like the idea of lights being in, in there for underneath. So that's something to think about as well. Jolly. Does this maybe say it's got the same possible hitch? What does that mean? It mounts to the hitch. <laughs> That's oh rack not included. Okay. So somehow it could be mounted to the hitch. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but okay. Yo, Tato. What's your Tato got? Oh, yeah, that's... Does that still say it's 800 pounds? Probably because it's so short.
I forgot to unmute you guys. Sorry about that. We have a local shop that can bend the outer frame. Uh, I didn't even think about that. If I put bends into it. Uh, this is just the different types. That is a long read. I used electrical conduit. See what I mean? <laughs> So that's one inch OD. And point one two wall. So what was that's less than twelve gauge. See, and that's super thick right there. Why does this not have the, why does this give me a wall thickness, but this does not give me a wall thickness? I mean, it, it gives me the gauge. Um, so if I do two inch, I'm looking at like 11 gauge. Point one two five, yeah. So I mean based on what I'm seeing though, I could probably do one and a half and one and a quarter. And if I do 11 gauge on both, that's, I mean, total going to add about a hundred. Yeah, that's about the right weight, right? So, but what do they charge? What do they charge? I could do special shapes, plates, and some sheet metal. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go thick on that at all. Probably like 20, 22 gauge. I mean, that I'm, I'm basically going to be cutting with a jigsaw, so... I've got to think about what I actually want to deal with there. But that's that's even honestly that is a a far far more forward conversation. But it seems like this might be a situation of build is better than buy. Uh, let's look at it. Let's just add this. I don't really have. A cost, right? This didn't break, right? No. Okay, good. I guess I could probably. Like, this is local, but I bet instead of 16, I want the, I want 11 gauge, 16, 16, 16. Man, looking at 16, it looks like 16 would, well, but what I'm, I'm thinking of, oh yeah, it looks nice and strong, but 
that's up and down. It This thing's going to be swaying left and right. I don't want to have that be an issue, right? Exposed fastener metal panels. What? Hmm. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. What's a standing seam metal panel? Eh, okay. It'd be flat sheets that I'm looking at. Ungalvanized, 24 gauge, 80 bucks. That would probably give me all of the panels I could possibly need. So, a. We're still looking though. I mean, I don't need it painted. I, I need it. Just need it not galvanized. Why does it have to be colored? Galvaloom. Can you weld Galvaloom? <laughs> yep. So that's not what I want anyway. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm just using it as an estimate. So 80 bucks. That's that's what I'm really looking at. Tube. Tube. 11 gauge, not 4x4, four four, but maybe I can use this. Oh, they just don't have anything for me to work with. Okay, fine. Let's look at this one. So basically about 40 bucks for 20, so another 80. So it ends up being 160. And then we're looking at um, locking pins, yeah, something like this. Ten millimeter by fifty, so it's ten millimeters. Didn't catch the care blast. Oh, that's just their biggest one. Okay. Wait, so which one is the length then? Oh, okay, that one's a little skinnier. Okay, so width, length. All right, so four of those is 28 $30, let's say 30 bucks. So we have 30, that's 190. And then I wonder if I could just use uh, uh, like struts, like basically gas piston. What are those called? Gas piston? No, gas lifter? <laughs> yeah. Gas strut spring shocks. So those are 200 pounds. That should be fine. So if I have 
a couple of 200 pound lifters. I can basically put those. Uh, but what do I need? What do you need to overcome that? For loads weighing between 160 and 220. Heavy duty RV bed lids, outdoor RV cabinet. This 25 inch, 200 pound gas spring has super hardness. Do not press it by hand during installation. So that gives me almost, that gives me a little bit over two feet that I can move this back and forth. For 50 bucks. My one concern is that everything looks like an angle. Everything that they're showing as an example. So do I need the mechanical leverage to overcome it? You know what I mean? Do I need to use the mechanical advantage in some way? Place a stick in the middle, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Um, for linear force, maybe that's what I need to do. Find the right strut. Calculate a gas spring for your application. These are all assuming mechanical advantage. But the flag is a nice touch. Then what do I use instead? Because I don't want to do... Well, I shouldn't say I don't want to do, but I, I would rather not do something like this, where it's like, okay, you need a motor or... I wouldn't mind a, a wind-up. But even that, like, that's a ball screw. That gets expensive, too. So what do we use instead? What do we use to lift? With a fixed screen and looking for a way to hide the screen. That's a hinge. Um, let's see. What use? Uh... Easy lifter. <laughs> Actually, this is this is something I would I need to look at as well, because I want to be able to level the trailer off, right? 
let's look at that. Let's take a quick break from this and look at leveling jacks. Stabilizer. I mean, that's a nice idea. It's a bit expensive, but it's something that would go right in the back. And then I'm hoping actually for four. I kind of like this idea, um, but there's no way that these are going to be long enough. And I don't want this to become another... Oh, well, I can just build another one. No, no thank you. Side mount drill powered. Here we go. Yes, please. Just, just go to the site. Don't, don't make me click here, click here, click there. I, I don't know when they did that, but that is annoying. That's going to be expensive, though. That's $800. Pull your drill trigger slowly. What's their range? So lift capacity is 1,800 pounds. Static, okay, is 7,000, so that's fine. I mean, I could always just go cheaper, right? Like these guys. What I want, though, is that it, that, that handle has to be able to come off. Because having these four just flap, you know, having four of those just flapping in the wind, eh, it's going to be a no for me, dog. I, mean, I guess I could probably get away with three. Because I need one for the front no matter what, right? What is this one? I don't know. At the very most, I, I want... I want some sort of stabilizer that can come out on the side, like where the, the tent flops over, right? I want a stabilizer to make sure that the whole thing doesn't just kick over uh, let's see Cyber Truck Co. Again, what the... I mean, we'll look at it. Why not? Heavy duty... Is this... This is for a Cyber Truck. It is, okay, no. Yeah, that's, that's completely useless to me. <laughs> You know, I didn't even look. Okay, no, it looks like it ties down. Does the ladder maybe act as a third point of stabilization? Like, I understand that you're not going to flip a car over, but this is on a trailer.
Stabilizing Jack. Yeah, see, that's what I want. Oh, those might be long enough, actually. How much do these stupid things cost? They don't sell them, of course. This is only if they're building the trailer for me. I mean, it's basically this. It's just a flip out and lock in place. It's two pieces of sheet metal that are of tube, tube that slide into each other. It's, it's not rocket surgery. And I don't want to make another one. I don't want to add another thing to my to make list. No, it doesn't look hard. It doesn't look easy either. Yeah, this is basically it. But what's their minimum and maximum? And while it's basically it, it is just basically it. It's not actually it. That's the one I was just looking at. So I'm guessing that's down and then what's the up folded? These might be what I'm looking at. They're kind of by hand. They don't really level anything. They really are just for stability. That's all right. I used a great ball. Let's see what we got now. Fantastic. Average, average, bad. Womp, womp. Ten fun. That's 10 fun. That's more fun. I mean, I understand that they're kind of cheap. They don't have anything in place for slide out stabilizer jacks. No. I mean, I'm thinking like the artillery swing these legs out and plow. It's, uh, I don't need all that. <laughs> I think it'd be cool, but I don't need all that. Roomba rooftop tent with what? 
marimba aluminum rooftop tent gas strut I'm guessing that's for a particular type of tent Okay, that's kind of funny. The idea of putting putting bars on your tent, which is on bars, that might be excessive. Sixty dollars for some bent metal with holes in it. Ah, oh, jeez. I I should just be. I mean, what? That's one, two, three, four, five. That's six holes. I could print a jig to do that. Eighty dollars, like. Just doing that by hand, I could probably sell that for 40. I could also do $500 delivery. What? <laughs> wow. Oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it's a piece of square tubing with four holes in it. It's still kind of cool. Hmm. That's something to look at. But I am looking for fold-out rooftop tent with gas struts now. Vertical lift strut. Will that work? Yeah, no, see, they have it. I mean, there isn't any reason I couldn't do it sideways as well. Let's see. Hey, what do you know? The same thing. Do I need to have the frame sit neutral when lowering, raising by hand? Okay, so they've got it. Their idea is that they pull the pin and it pushes itself up. Horizontal. No, I need vertical.
that's <laughs> it looks like it but tricky tricky that is not vertical What is this? Is this like a pump? Lock and gas transfer devices that use compressed gas to provide a pushing or pulling force. Now, yeah, but this is one of those contact us. We, we don't actually sell to the public sort of deals. Precision lockable gas strings. Am I crazy or did I see Russian there first? Nope. Free gas start calculator. I mean, I am tempted to, because uh, those ones that I was looking at, if I remember right, they weren't like a million dollars. So it might be worth it just to throw them on there. It's a two pack for 50 bucks. I would need four of them, so that's a hundred dollars. That's still, it's not a ridiculous amount. It's a dumb amount to waste. But we'll put it on here. Oh, I forgot to put the weight. Dang it. Twenty feet. Twenty feet was what it had. I thought it had a weight. Yeah, it was it was here where they had the weight. Steel tube, rect no square, and. This one is two by two, 16, but I'm looking at one and a half by 11, so 45. Wait, we already did that. We were going with 80 pounds, right? It's already in there. Never mind. All right. I probably should have broke this out a little bit more. Whatever. Oh no, that was dollar amount, so we'll just go with 90. We're still doing okay. I mean, once we throw us on there, but this is, this is driving. So I don't think it's, I think it's less of a problem when it's not driving. Yeah, no. It is going to be interesting trying to pick up a 20 foot long tube of steel. That could be a whole new thing. <laughs> Probably have to get that cut in half or even better would be to figure out my 
my weights and I bet if I look here, they probably building kits. What building kit? Wow. No. I always like looking at, like, only $28,000 in this garage could be yours. Clearance. I always like looking at these, you know, big industrial companies, and you look and see, like, okay, what do they have on clearance, and why? I, I guarantee they prepped this for someone, and they, they backed out of it. And now they're like, well, it's just sitting here on a pallet. <laughs> What do we do? Or in this case, 60 feet, 16 high, 40 wide. That's probably two or three pallets. They're just like, we need to get this out of here. <laughs> it just, it, it makes me laugh thinking about that stuff. Uh, Now, online metals is where I normally go for my for my stuff. I don't know why I didn't even think of it. Like they do, they do the cutting. So if I can figure everything out, chunky chunkers. See, that's why. That's why I, I look at them. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Steel. Carbon steel, not pipe. I want tube. Whoops. I want steel, carbon. Go away. I hit ten percent off. What? Tube square. Let's look at this two inch. So that's the 16 gauge. 0 0.12 is probably what I want. $10 for one. For one what? Is that per foot? Masharna. Dang it. Oh, select a cut size for price. So, I mean... I'm probably looking at two foot sections, right? And really, I just need four of them. But it looks like they want to sell me 10 of them. Oh, okay, so it's 11. So if I do four pieces, that's 50 bucks. That's eight feet instead of 20 feet. But at least I get them cut to size. Ends up being, ends up being costing me the same. I get less material, but I get exactly the amount of material that I need. doesn't show delivery though, right? So let's look at that. If we did two foot sections, that's so we'll add those continue and then we want 
slightly less. Oops, that's the wrong size. I wanted this one. Two foot. Four. Add. Okay, this ends up being a little bit more expensive. But now we update this guy. Telescoping. And it's already got the holes in it. Do I want the holes? Do I want the speed holes or not? It's going to be a little lighter. It's also a little bit thinner. But only a little bit. Well, let's look at this. Again, four. Okay. So it actually ends up being twice the so twice the cost. Shipping's actually not terrible. Oh, and this is this is actually including the wrong one too. So if I get rid of you, it ends up being about twenty dollars more than having extra stuff. But I don't have to pick it up. All right, that's that's something to consider. And I can't really put the price down because the price on that is going to drastically change, but. Uh, let me just, I'm going to throw all the way over here. I'll just throw it there. Because that's at least a reminder to that I can look there. Oop, one second. Hi -yo. Sorry, more house things. It's uh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to miss that house. I love, loved that house. It's uh, Pacifica, so everyone thinks it's foggy, but it's at the far end. It's right next to a 
awesome beach and it gets more sun than you'd think. Uh, sad days, but not that sad. It's gonna it's funding all of this, right? Hopefully. We'll see. Um where was I? Oh yeah, we were still looking at we looked at the metal, we got the metal thing handled, but there was also let's let's do the strut the struts and you know what? We'll make a decision there later. Um it's technically part of the DIY rack. So hi. -oh. I might end up needing to just make a whole form just for the DIY rack planning detail the attentions you know all of that stuff uh, we are still I'm still considering these stabilizers like I I know I want something like this I want something that folds up out of the way and clicks down but I want it actually to fold up because I don't want it to be underneath. If it's underneath, it has the possibility of grabbing on stuff, scraping on stuff. Granted, if it's <laughs> if it's higher than the axle, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, but yeah, okay. Um, my mind's going a million different places at the moment. Like, I like this. I don't like that it's straight up and down. I kind of prefer this. But I would still like to be able to crank that out. It is trailer landing gear, isn't it? It is on a semi. It is not. No, it is a stabilizer. It's trailer stabilizer. Is it a stabilizer jack? I mean, it's basically these guys. I keep looking at them. It's these guys, but... I need to know how these mount, right? Let's see what Reese Hitches has to say. 650 pound lift. Leg extends six inches and is infinitely adjustable. I think it's six inches, right? 17. So it's a foot and a half that it extends. I think I need a little bit more than that. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm looking for extra long. Class A Customs, two pack, long. Longest length in this case, almost two feet. But can they be mounted on the outside? It doesn't look like they can be mounted on the outside.
Because I want them to fold all the way up. I guess, no. No. I, I keep thinking or saying to myself, I can just make my own custom plate. No. <laughs> I need to not do that. And this is a four pack. What's their range? Maximum lifting is 18 inches. All right, you know what? I am going to, because right now I don't really have any measurements. So I'm just going to say these are my, these are going to be my stabilizing because it's a pack of four for 50 bucks. I think they're too short, but right now it's a placeholder until I get some measurements. Accessory. Um, we'll just put an X in there. They are $57. And what's our number? What do these weigh? 650 pounds. I don't wait, 15 pounds. We haven't really added much to the uh to the price, at least. Or I'm not looking at... No, tent is definitely included. So like if I take this off... Oops. Wait. 3348, 3408. Okay. 8567. Let's make sure everything's adding up. 8627, it, yeah, okay. So it's, we're moving right along. I still need to look at maintenance. Like, I definitely am going to need new shocks, but uh, I know that I need to put I'm still listed as be right back. Dang it, am I on mute too? I'm not on mute at least. That's good. Why didn't my OBS transition me back? Here I am talking about how uh, none of this is changing, or none of this is too bad, too badly changing, and you have no idea what this is. <laughs> All right, so maintenance. Um, one of the things I know I have to do, I'm going to have to pull the axle off. Uh, I think I can just flip the whole thing over to do this. And that that's probably going to be, I mentioned the, uh, the four wheeler inside. That's probably going to be how I get that out of there. Uh, and 100 axle. Is there a fitting? Did I put, I did Axel EL. Hey, I actually got approved for this. So only one of the U-bolts that goes through the spring hangers has a Zerk fitting. The other three do not look like they have the ability. There's no deviation to this part. You'd think if a zerk was broken off, there would be jagged edges or a ring. A 
see, I would love to get this built out like this. This is how it's supposed to be. But man, is that expensive. There are Zerks on all the points. They're commonly smashed. <laughs> all right, so I've got to be looking for some Zerks. First was a pressed in type that kept popping out when the trailer was greased with an air powered grease gun. The second was the replacement that was inserted inside the bolt before the bolt was attached. M100 Grease Zerk. What is this? No image. Perfect. So one thing I haven't done is I have not... I've never used one of these. Uh, oh, wait. M100. I've never used a grease gun. How fun is that? So apparently the M100 and 416 have different wheel bearings, grease seals, and races. They do share the same nut size, the wheel bearing, blah, blah, blah. I was wondering what parts I needed. I have them for service in PDF. Well, that's good to know. Uh, actually, let's do the M100 maintenance manual. I think I've already downloaded this, but... All right, where does it say? Oil seal retainer. Pivot, cotter. I'm not seeing anything here for a Zerk fitting. Clamp, lock, mode, adjusting, bell crank. Okay. those pages left intentionally blank. Careful watch must be kept for evidence of moths and ter what? Where's which? Wheel bearing should be cleansed and hand packed with lubricant as specified in the lubrication chart. Paragraph 3-1. Lubrication chart. Not worried about that stuff. O E H D O. Okay. G A A Grease. Automotive and Artillery. Okay. All connecting linkages. All right. I thought I saw something where you had to take the... Well, it says... Wheel bearings. GAA. And that is A, annually. Every second SPM service. <laughs> Every second S. What does that mean?
every second s service What does that mean by every second s? No. Every second s meaning. Uh, nope. If you know what that means, please let me know. <laughs> what is every second S? Oh, maybe it means every second. Okay, every second semi annually. Never mind. If you jump in the comments and tell me what that is, don't do it. So it's just saying once a year that needs to be done. So. What does that look like? Preventative, general checks and services. Remove. <laughs> Remove anything that's puncturing the tire. <laughs> that's that's step one, you know, in case you're curious. Uh, visually inspect. Okay. For unusual excessive noises, lights, brake temperature. An overheated wheel drum or brake drums indicate improperly adjusted, defective, or dry bearing. The wheel bearings will be disassembled, cleaned. It's in section 4 9. I'm guessing I don't worry about the inner bearing cone. So, okay, I just need to take this guy. Adjusting nut, lock washer. Lock nut. I just got to take this apart. And the only thing I'm worried about is that gasket. If that gasket's not metal, I guarantee that's going to fall apart. Uh, yeah, it's a black rubber gasket. No. I don't know what that is, but that's not what I need. Floor net kit. I am probably making my own. What do they want for this eye? Two hundred dollars. Oh, interesting. So there's supposed to be Zerks on those U bolts. Okay. But 
the manual just says the manual says different but okay Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I need to find that gasket. This site seems to have a lot of those things, um, but they're a lot of expensive. <laughs> Special heavy duty inner tube. Drain. Oh, well, the assemblies on these are actually reasonable. The, the probably because they're new, they're not original. Tire valve, trailer bolt. Lunette key. Valve stem washer, wheel bearings. Hey, on sale. I wonder if I should just get a couple of new ones, huh? Like, I'm sure the ones that I have are fine, but but if I pop it open and something breaks, but I still. I'm actually after is this gasket. Front hub gasket. That doesn't look at all like the manual. Shuckle. What the puckle is a shuckle? I think I've already caught a shuckle though, so it's saying, yeah, did not catch the shuckle. Dang it. So angry. Wheel hub bearing seal. That's probably something I need to consider. If it were my trailer, I would pull both bearings, clean and inspect. Dealers stock the flange gaskets. Clean and repack. I also feel it's good practice to differentiate what is printed as directives from learned technique.
if this is done properly, the inner nut will not loosen and won't need the additional bend of the lock washer inward. See, a lot of this is, is where I start getting concerned, like, and it's funny because, you know, the first time I changed a tire, same thing. Is this tight enough? Is this going to fall off on me? Am I going to hear the first nut fall off? Or is it, am I just suddenly going to be scraping and see the tire go flying past me? <laughs> you know, it all comes down to... It comes down to practice doing it and seeing it work and then going, okay, uh, it's not that bad. Bubba Fix and Quick Sale. Let's try that M100 flange gasket. M100 Jeep flange. That looks like the picture. The question is. Forty one to forty five. I mean, I think if it fits a Willie's, it's a Willie's trailer. They're supposedly about the same. And two bucks. I wish this guy had him because I would rather right now just buy two new bearings and two new because I mean I'm planning on taking this thing for a long ways out for a long time I'm replacing those bearings Maybe I can just search. I wonder if I should get the uh, bearing cup, bearing the lock washer too, the lock washer and the lock nut. Wheel bearing and washer includes two nuts, one large and one medium. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing, right? But it, he doesn't have the gaskets. That's, well... I mean, I'm not going to buy it on camera. But I think I'm going to get that set and then a couple of these and find out. Because that's a situation where if I take the thing apart, it, honestly, even if I take the thing apart and everything's fine, I'll have spares. And it seems like that's what, I mean, if you're supposed to repack these things every year, basically... Yeah, that's what's happening. I mean, I'm going to end up paying an arm and a leg for shipping, but 
the next thing I'm going to do, or my, my next attempt at a stream is maybe going to be in the, uh, in the warehouse with the trailer, maybe go over it. Um, I might not stream that. I might just record it and then see what happens. We'll see. Uh, we're getting near the end of today's stream, so I'm kind of just wrapping up, looking at what's next. Uh, normally, I would be streaming tomorrow, playing games, but uh, a good friend of mine, uh, camping buddy, off-roading buddy, uh, his uh, father passed, so I'm going to that service, and I'd rather be there for him than playing games. No offense, just is what it is. So, with that in mind, I will see you all on Tuesday. Um, I will be updating uh, I need a screen that shows my other stuff. But I'll, I'll be updating the website, connectedme.com, with any news, um, as well as announcing this video coming out. I'll probably throw together some links of some of the hardware that I've looked at, or at least a link to the spreadsheet that I'm filling out. Um, it'll probably be on YouTube. I, there's nowhere to do it here on Twitch. If you're uh, interested in in a little bit more or have you know some advice for things that i'm screwing up doing wrong please leave a message or you know catch me on the next one and and yell stop into the the chat window <laughs> uh yeah on that note hopefully this is enough to start at least looking forward um and see where we go from here. So have fun. Enjoy the ride. I do plan on getting into a little bit more of the technology side of things, but I think once I start doing the electrical install, we'll start seeing more entertaining sort of stuff. Uh, well, entertaining for my normal audience. If any of you are car people, <laughs> that might be different. But yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making me a part of your day. If you're on YouTube. And you made it this far. That's really awesome of you. If you're on Twitch and lurking. Thanks for hanging out. Time for me. To head out. Really, thank you. And please, any advice is good advice. Even if it's bad advice, I'll take it. <laughs> See you on the flip side. Bye.